But Iowa, to me, they have an interesting schedule. They open with Miami of Ohio and then Rutgers. So it's kind of a soft launch for them, both at home. Then they go on the road at Iowa State, their in-state rival, who they always play nearly every season. And uh, they have won at least you – know, they've won the last four games in a row in that series. And yet there's a lot of people out there that think Iowa State's also going to be a top 25 team uh, as well as uh, Iowa this coming year. Iowa was 9-4 and four last year. Iowa State was 8-5. and five. So if they can get to 3-0 and oh and have kind of a, a launch off period there, that could really help them. But here's the question I have for them. When you get in deep against a Wisconsin and a Nebraska within your division, both those games on the road, why – am I going to believe that Iowa, which has such a tremendous home field advantage at Kinnick Stadium, is going to go on the road and win one or both of those pivotal division games this year? That would be my question for Kirk Ferentz is, is how do you breathe that in this team that that other than that 2015 season when they were 12-0 and at one point and finished 12-2, uh, and lost uh, in the Big Ten championship game in the bowl game, um, what gives you that thought? that Iowa uh, can go on the road and win the tough game that, that uh, they have to win to win this division. They're not going to win this division unless they win one of those two road games. And in all honesty, may need to win them both. So that'd be my, uh, my thought on uh, Iowa is um, you're great at home, but when you get on the road, you got to win uh, in a tough spot. And we just consistently have not seen Iowa do that with the exception of the 12 and up season when, I assume they won five road games that year. So, uh, Steve, that, the schedule, Iowa's schedule, road game at Michigan, at Northwestern, at Wisconsin, at Nebraska. It's That's br- brutal. Four, four very possible losses. So they're they're not. I I like what they have. A lot of their pieces, but that schedule alone, I can't pick them to be winning coming out of the West. Yeah. Nebraska. I'm giving you Nebraska, Tone. What do you see with Nebraska? Year two for Scott Frost, 4-8 and eight last year, but so many tough losses. And uh, the terrible start. What was it? One, two, three, four, five, six. My God, did they lose their first seven games? No, first six. First, first six. six games. And I, there are people, when it was going on, where they were mocking Scott Frost and mocking people who thought Scott Frost was the second coming. But if you look at those losses, they're all close. This is his first year in the system. I think he's going to be outstanding for Nebraska. I think he's going to have the Huskers right back in the thick of things in the Big Ten West. I think everybody, not everybody, most people expect that to happen this year. I want to see what this defense looks like because they have not had a good defense or even a decent defense in a decade, in years and years. And the Big Ten West is getting more talented. Offenses are getting better as Ohio State's defenses defense has seen the last couple of years. So you better have a pretty good defense to win the Big Ten West. I know we think of that whole division as a second-class citizen, but there, there's still plenty of talent to demand you be at your best if you're going to run the table. And, you know, they've got their toughest in interdivision division you know they have they're at Minnesota and at Purdue. They have everybody else coming into theirs. You know they go to Wisconsin. They go to um, Maryland and Illinois. They should win both of those. The, the Maryland game will be sixty-two to sixty-one, and we'll see. You know who who doesn't pick up the two-point conversion at the end. But they have a more manageable schedule than than Iowa. But I I want to see this defense stop somebody and. Like not even hold teams to like 27, hold them to 16 and win some games going away and relieve some pressure on Adrian Martinez. Yeah, good point uh, that you make there. He had a bang-up year as a freshman, but it was almost like he had to be perfect with the football. Mm -hmm. He could not turn it over. He could not, uh, uh, you know, turn it loose, let's just say at times. And I think a lot of that had to do uh, with with the fact that their defense, in a lot of instances, uh, could not stop anybody. So, uh, to me, that was probably uh, the, the biggest uh, issue there. I'm having a just a quick. Okay, I got it fixed. Can you still hear me? I got you. Okay. You got cool. me? Yeah, I just wanted to fix a setting on my my computer there. I got Wisconsin eight and five preseason top four five six last year and was a major, major, major disappointment. 
I mean, they lose at home to BYU 24-21 in week three. Uh, lost at Michigan pretty predictably. Lost at Northwestern 31-17. to I don't think that score is indicative of the way Northwestern just kind of rocked them around the world last year. Uh, lose at home to Minnesota first time in 15 years. They lose the Bunyan Axe Trophy jug. I jug. I don't even know which one they do. <laughs> Paul Bunyan's jug. Paul Bunyan jug. <laughs> is that what it's called? No I, don't, no. I don't even know. I think it's the little brown jug is Minnesota and Michigan. The axe, that, that axe is uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Minnesota, Wisconsin. Which okay, Minnesota so. also won. Yeah, yeah, they, they play for the Axe. And, uh, you know, I want to ask Paul Christ, it's like, okay, you know, you, you go through uh, just a, a very rough eight and five season, something they're not accustomed to. They've been in double digits in each of the four previous seasons in wins and a Big Ten contender in most of those seasons. And last year, way off the pace, just how do you – uh, reinstill in your group the idea that we are Wisconsin and come out with that uh, type of, uh, you know, physicality is their entire game. And, and uh, you know, how do you get back to playing that brand of football when when it just wasn't there for you uh, to the level it needed to be last year? So I guess that would be my question for Paul Christ is how do you summon that? How do you bring that back after a one-year hiatus of just dominating the line of scrimmage and dominating the opponent? And I think there's some defensive issues there as well. Uh, six guys coming back on defense, uh, you know, but really no household names. I mean, we've seen a lot of all Big Ten guys come through there on defense in recent years. And I'm looking at their depth chart, and I don't recognize any of these names. So I guess we'll have to see if anybody can break through there. Let's flip the page. Minnesota Gopher and our good friend P.J. Fleck, former Ohio State Jim Trussell graduate assistant, going back about 12 or 13 years, seven and six, got Minnesota to a bowl game. And when they got to the bowl game, the quick lane game against uh, Georgia Tech, they just blistered Georgia Tech 34 to 10. So uh, nine starters back on offense, seven on defense. What do you like, don't like about? the? I had one person, honest to goodness, in this 11-person poll pick Minnesota to win the West. I don't know what they were smoking that day, but uh, what's your thought about Minnesota? Minnesota. Did uh, did Herb Street also pick Minnesota, or is that something he did a couple years ago? I um, don't know. I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me. He and he and Fleck, you know, might uh, might be good buds. I don't know. Uh, I, I like what uh, wherever PJ Fleck goes, the talent rises, and he gets a lot out of it, out of them. Um, I would want to know where how is the consistency coming along because while they did win at Wisconsin last year. They also lost 55-31 at Illinois. You know, so how do you stop from becoming from being two different teams, basically? How do you become a more consistent team? How is that process coming along? And you know, they've got a quarterback battle going on. They've got they've got some really talented players on defense and Carter Coughlin, a defensive end linebacker, and an Antoine Winfield Jr., who is the son of arguably the greatest Ohio State Buckeye defensive player of all time. So you know he he can obviously play a little. Uh, so yeah, there's there's questions all over because it's Minnesota, but I want to see this program that he is building become a more consistent. We know they're dangerous, but they're also dangerous to themselves, and I want to see them just be a, a safer team to themselves and a more dangerous team to the opponents. Yeah, here's a game for them coming off a bye in November, November the ninth, playing Penn State at home. And to me, um, Penn State is middle of the road in the east. And if Minnesota is going to make a jump, uh, that's a game that they need to win at home. So that that's one that I would kind of circle a barometer type game, I think, for them. Northwestern Wildcats. I drew that one. They won the Big Ten West last year, 9-5. and five. Uh, won their bowl game as well after losing to Ohio State uh, in the uh, championship game, uh, beat Utah 31 to 20. I think they had to come back from a double digit deficit, as I recall, uh, to win that game over Utah, the number 20 team in the country. So, 
they lose, of course, uh, Clayton Thorson at quarterback. Uh, they've got Hunter Johnson, who spent some time at Clemson and uh, had played seven games at Clemson there as a true freshman. Uh, you lose the outstanding uh, uh quarterback Clayton Thorson there uh, out of that mix. So I guess my feeling for Northwestern is you made the Big Ten uh, championship game, won the West by three full games over everybody else. I want to know two things. What are you going to do for an encore in the Big Ten now that everybody has that game circled and you beat them last year? The only Big Ten team they didn't beat in the regular season was Michigan. They were 8-1. and one. They went uh, perfect 6-0 and oh, as a, a spider or a fly or something is flying around here. 6-0, and oh, I believe, in their division. Uh, but what are you going to do to get off to a better start? Uh, beat Purdue the first week and then lose in rapid-fire succession to Duke and Akron at home. That, that, that can't happen. So uh, this year – as you look at their schedule, it very well could happen again. They open at Stanford, then they're off for a week, then they have UNLV. Then you've got Michigan State at Wisconsin, at Nebraska, bye week, Ohio State. Wow. So that's, that's a tough haul. And, that's and then a situation, Iowa. Yeah. And then that's Iowa. A, that's a situation where they could be a lot better than their record. Yeah, they could be two and five or yeah. three and four and playing good football, but just getting knocked around by. Mm -hmm. You know, Stanford, I think, is a borderline top 25 team. Michigan State's top 25. Wisconsin's top 25. Nebraska is borderline, if not certain to be in it. And Ohio State and Iowa. I mean, Iowa, you know, may or may not be. But, uh, geez, that's – that's and the first seven games, the only breather is UNLV. Mm -hmm. So, that, I guess that's my storyline for Fitzy tomorrow. Hey, Fit, hey, how's it go on the telecom? Hi, Fitz. This is Teddy. You know, his buddy from the, the Chicago Tribune, uh, Teddy Greenstein, always chimes in. Hi, Fitz. This is Teddy. They're on a, on a nickname to first name basis, I guess. But uh, that would be my storyline for them is uh, how do you avoid a one and six start? Uh, that uh, which could be very daunting for them. Let's go to Purdue. The Purdue Boilermakers, Tony, six and seven last year. Jeff Brom, third year. Passed up a chance to go to his alma mater, it seems, at Louisville and uh, stuck with uh, Purdue. And now let's see what he can do there. Um, I don't know. What's your thought uh, about Purdue? They got Rondale Moore, but do they have any any other pieces of note uh, going into this season? I mean, they lost a lot on offense, but they still have Jeff Brom. So that's that's the biggest keeper that they've had in a while. And you still have Rondale Moore and Elijah Sindelar has played forever and he's experienced. My question for Purdue is a lot like Minnesota. Can you be consistent? You know, one week after they beat Ohio state, they go and lose at Michigan state. A couple weeks later, they get killed at Minnesota. They need to be more consistent and, and put these things together. They had a really good recruiting class, re recruited some more uh, talented wide receivers some four-star guys, some guys that Ohio State was looking at, just like Rondale Moore. Not that they're all just like Rondale Moore, but Ohio State was looking at Rondale Moore as well. So they're, they're putting some talent on the field, but you know, I think we assume that the offense will be fine. But Purdue, in order to win, has to stop people as well. And you know, that, that was something that Joe Tiller and um, Danny Hope, they had some solid defensive lines in their time at Purdue. Maybe maybe they can get back to that and start complementing the offense that we all assume will be fine. So my, my big question for them is just, you know, consistency and defense. We know you're going to score some points, but will you be able to stop anybody? Yep. Last team in the West is the Illinois Fighting Illini. Four and eight for Lovey Smith last year. Uh, that's uh, the best record he's had in three years. There's the head coach. The athletic director stands firmly behind him and believes he's going to be the guy that gets uh, Illinois eventually back to a bowl game, haven't been to one since 2014, and, and uh, really never been a consistent winner throughout much of the 2000s. It's been a, a program that's kind of struggled, I think, only five bowl games uh, since the uh, turn of the millennium, 2000. So I think uh, Lovey Smith, uh, he's got a, a tough road to hoe here. Uh, seven returners on offense, ten returners on defense, could be going with a true freshman by the name of Isaiah Williams. 
And it strikes me, isn't that the name of the guy who was the quarterback there 10 years ago? Uh, known, as, known as Juice, Isaiah Juice Williams. Uh, I guess he's got uh, another year of eligibility left, although he's listed here as a true freshman. So um, interesting if that's how it comes down. And it's certainly going to be hard to win big in the Big Ten uh, with a true freshman. But uh, so many other guys that played last year are back. So I guess that's my uh, – <clears throat> question for Lovey is um, how do you get a young kid ready to play? Their schedule is definitely favorable early. Akron at Connecticut and Eastern Michigan, a good start to the season for them. And uh, we'll see if they can parlay, a, you know, maybe a 3-0 and start into a six-win season on the whole and get to a bowl game. But it's going to be difficult for them. You know, they do I, have I Rutgers coming to town, so that could be a four wins if they get that three in a, three in a row. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to beat somebody at home that's above them, like mm-hmm. a Nebraska or Wisconsin or Northwestern, and it seems highly unlikely that any of those things are going to happen. So um, I don't know. I don't have a whole lot of, lot of hope for Lovey. I, great guy. I would think they'll probably give him another year just because of, uh, you know, how bad that program really has been. And uh you know, he, he is a great ambassador for the uh, the program and a great role model for his players as well uh, with the way that uh, he leads his life, certainly. So I think that uh, he, he'll probably get another shot, even if it doesn't go so well this year. 